what's the best intermediate backpack for those who are wanting to go lightweight but aren't quite sure if they're ready to go all into the ultra light roll top backpacks that's what i'm going to answer in this video as i talk about my new backpacking choice. We all know that there's backpacks that backpackers start with. They're your classic run of the mill. You get them at the big box stores. They, they got usually side compartments and a main compartment and a sleeping bag compartment and a brain and they've got all these different parts and zippers and things and they're really easy to use but they are heavy. My first backpack which was pretty like lightweight compared to some on the market came in at 4.3 pounds just for my backpack. But then you go to the other extreme and you've got these ultralight backpacks, which are usually like less than 50 liters, usually in the 40 liter range, main compartment, roll top design, and they have usually just the two kind of side pockets for like drinks and beverages, and then one sort of mesh po pocket on the front. And I just realized I didn't think I could strap everything that I needed to on it, stuff everything that I needed to in it. You have to be really committed to the ultralight philosophy in order to jump from being a beginner to using an ultralight backpack. In comes Granite Gear. Granite Gear has perhaps what I've been able to find is the most versatile backpack on the market. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why? Let me go over a few of the quick features on this backpack that make it, in my opinion, the best intermediate backpack. You're not ready to go ultra light, but you think you might be heading that direction. You know that you're further along than just being a beginner and you're wanting to something to shave off your weight. This is the backpack for you. Let me tell you why. The first thing I want to mention, unlike many of the ultra light backpacks that you find out there, is that this backpack does come with a frame. It's not frameless like many roll top ultralight backpacks are, but the frame is completely removable. So if down the road you get to a point where you don't need this extra support and you've gotten to the point where you're a sub 25 pound total weight backpacker, well then you could just pull this out and save yourself even more weight. I don't know exactly how much this weighs. I'll put that up on the screen somewhere uh, when I get home to, to weigh that. But in the meantime, if you have a little bit of a heavier backpack, then you can use the frame to add extra support. A little extra weight, yes, but extra support to your back. This backpack is rated to be able to use up to 35 pounds total weight comfortably, which is a pretty good weight to aim for, I think, especially if you've gone through that beginner phase where you've started to learn what you can and cannot bring. You know, 35 pounds is an awesome mark to aim for. I've been able to hit that and lower. I've also taken this up to 44 pounds. It was a winter camping trip. I added a lot of extra gear, and I knew that that was pushing this backpack to its limit, and it held up fine. It was still very comfortable. I mean, as comfortable as a 45 pound backpack can be. And I really didn't have any problems with it on the trail. Uh, the other thing that makes this an awesome intermediate backpack is as you can tell, it actually is a roll top backpack. Um, it's completely roll top in a main compartment. So if you end up getting to the point where you want to remove brain and just go with a roll top backpack, you can. If you still feel like you need the extra storage of the brain, you have one, but you can get rid of it. You can have just the roll top backpack. That is awesome. Also, most intermediate backpackers and beginner backpackers are still using bladders and inline water filters. So it has a hydration spot for that. Some, not all, but some ultralight backpacks don't even have that because most ultralight backpackers are going with smart water bottles and similar things like that. As you can see on the back, it's still well padded with this awesome uh, foam kind of backing. So even if you take that inner frame out, you still have cushion and support riding here on the back. Now, let's talk about this front pocket. This front pocket is great. It's another mesh pocket design, just like many backpacks out there. You can put things in here, it stretches, it's got lots of room. There's only two places this backpack has had any issues with for me, and this is one of them. As you can see, within the first season, I have gotten a little hole now that was more of a user error, to be honest. I was kind of sliding down some really, really sharp shale rocks. Not, not like scree, but solid rocks. And obviously one of them caught this and ripped it a little bit. I, right away as I was doing it, I thought I might be ripping it. What I am impressed with is how much of a beating this bottom has taken. I have, like I said, put this on granite, slid on granite. I've, I've done a lot, really, really rough surface rocks, 
and um, and it's it's sturdy, it's strong, no signs of tear. Um, so that's awesome, very sturdy. It also has these awesome side pockets, which are cut asymmetrically, so you have easy access to any water bottles, or I keep my bear spray in this, so I can easily reach in and grab it. Another thing that makes this a great backpack for intermediate backpackers is hip belt pockets. I love having access to the gear that I might need right on my hips, whether it's snacks, whether it's my cell phone, whether it's some of my personal toiletries like sunscreen and different things like that, having them right here. And these are generous to say the least. So I don't really have any way to show you exactly how big this is other than I'll take my GSI mug and it's definitely not an easy fit, but it can even fit almost entirely in there. That's how big this pocket is, can't zip up. But I mean, I doubt you're putting anything bigger than a mug in your hip belt pockets. Tons of room there. The other thing that's really amazing about this backpack is its adjustability. So you can take this entire hip belt off, which again, if you get so ultra light that you don't need hip straps and you want to just use this as a shoulder backpack, I wouldn't recommend it, but you could and save yourself even more weight. But what's really cool about this is you can peel off the Velcro, you can size it to your specific waist size. So um, if maybe you're on the smaller side, you need something a little bit smaller, awesome. You need something a little bit bigger, something to grow with you and last through the years, awesome. I love this. The other thing that's amazing about this is you can take your hip belt, clip on your brain, and you now have a lumbar pack, day pack for you to go out and do any, uh, you know, excursions through the day. So I have used this before. It was fairly comfortable. I probably overweighted it, which wasn't the most comfortable, but it was still really convenient. And this is kind of a pro and kind of a con. It's a pro because I think it adds to the versatility and the intermediate realm of this backpack. And that is all the buckles. It's a con because short of cutting these buckles off, you're not gonna be able to get rid of them to save that weight. So first things first that you'll notice is it has some buckles along the front, which you can also use to strap in anything or to hold whatever you have in this front pocket in a little bit tighter. Those are pretty handy. You could probably also tie some webbing to these buckles. It has two buckles on the side. One, night, one thing that's nice about this is you can actually put this buckle underneath your side pocket. So if you want to still cinch your bag tight, but you don't want to lose access to a large pocket, you can still do that with this little hole right here. That's an awesome feature. It also has gear loops on the bottom, as well as it comes with four shock cord ties. I've moved two to the front for my water filtration system. It has an awesome kind of V style clip that goes along the top. So what you can do is you could grab whatever gear you want, put it there on the top to hang and then cinch it nice and tight down. So great for jackets, great even maybe for a tent if you needed to strap a tent to the top. And because it's a V shape, it offers a wider stability to hold that gear down rather than just a single strap up. As far as the webbing and and the actual shoulder straps themselves go. They're quite durable right here. They've got some padding, not tons, and that has been one of the complaints with this backpack, is that they have padding, but because this webbing is so thin, it can dig into the shoulders a little bit. Personally, I haven't had much of a problem with it. Uh, the one area that I have kind of had a little bit of a problem is how this backpack sits with the load bearers, which are the straps between your shoulders and the backpack itself. I find that no matter how I have this weighted, I actually have to pull these quite tight to get the right kind of weight distribution, which isn't a problem, but I have an extra like foot of webbing. So, you know, I guess I could cut that off, but I've tried loosening it up and just the way the backpack sits is I can't get that right kind of balance beyond pulling these pretty tight. So uh, something to be mindful of if, if you really use load bearers, that's the one area of sort of discomfort I have noticed, but it kind of depends on how I'm wearing the backpack and what kind of terrain I'm going up. Other than that, I found it pretty comfortable. It does have a sternum strap, of course. There's only been one other area of failure that I've had 
which is this side right here. I was pulling my cinch cord on the side pretty tight to hold in some camera gear and I actually heard a little bit of a rip and the side actually came loose from the frame, the, the foam frame itself. So um, that was something for me to be mindful of. I have to be a little bit more cautious with that. All in all, I can't say enough about how much I love this backpack. It saved me almost two pounds off my base weight. So it's an incredibly lightweight backpack while being versatile. And I'm really excited to be able to take this backpack, go further with it, use it longer than maybe I would have another backpack. It's become my go-to. And finally, you guys know me, I'm all about cost and affordability. One of the things that's awesome about Mass Drop is that they aim to be as affordable as possible. So it's really affordable backpack on, when it was on Mass Drop. But even if you don't get it on drop.com or Mass Drop, you can get it at Granite Gear. And it's still, I believe, 160 US or 120 US, can't remember completely, which is really affordable. I think it was 120 US for me from drop.com and uh, I think it goes for 150 to 160 on Granite Gear's website. That's really affordable for a backpack considering most ultralight backpacks are gonna cost 250 to 350 plus if you're going Z-Packs. So I've been super satisfied, very happy. If you'd like to know how else I saved weight on my kit this year and hear about my new tent that I also got from Mass Drop, the Mass Drop and Dan Durston x -Mid, then why don't you click this video? I do a full in-depth review of that tent and why I love it so much. I'll see you over there.